both debated homosexuality and, yeah. and you've talked to a lot of gay people in your videos. Uh, what does Islam say about that and, and how do you guys view that in the modern day? Islam forbids homosexuality as a practice, not as a feeling. You can say someone is not in control of how they feel in some cases and we, we accept that. So if someone feels in a certain way, then it's forbidden to act upon it in like in a penetrative way mm -hmm. if you're a man or so. I have sex with another man or so on. Islam forbids this. It doesn't mean that if someone practices it, by the way, they become an ex-Muslim or that they leave Islam or they excommunicate. They're still within the fold. It's, it's just seen as a major sin. So when you say major sin, are, are there a number it's of... a hierarchy them? of sins. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So where would that rank? High. Very high. Like uh, Ibn Qayyim, one of the scholars of Islam, he says, up there with murder. It's up there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's very... So if a man yeah. cheats on his wife, it's a major sin. Like yes. on the same is that, level. Like is that. that on the same level? Yeah, 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 100%. There are things that in Islam that main people will not consider. Like, for example, interest, getting a loan from the bank. Yes. Things like that are seen as major sins on that kind of level as well. So there is a hierarchy that we have going on, which maybe some outsiders, when they look at it, they will find it a bit strange. But mm. having said that, the, the argument we put forward about homosexuality is this, is that there's two major like ethical pathways in Western ethics. You have something called utilitarianism, and you have something called deontological ethics. Utilitarianism was spearheaded by someone called Jeremy Bentham. And the idea is really it's the harm principle, which is that you can do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anybody else. And we're trying to achieve the greatest good for the greatest number of people. When I say the liberal ethic is dominant in the West, I'm talking about these notions, that you can do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anyone else. Deontological ethics is spearheaded by someone called Immanuel Kant. And what he says is that there are some things which will always be categorically wrong. If you imagine all of society doing it and it leads to some kind of impossibility, then that thing is wrong. So for example, he would say lying is always wrong and there's no justification, even if death resulted as a result of it. Lying is always wrong. I'm saying on both ways, homosexuality as a practice, there is aspersion cast on the morality of it. And I'll explain how. If we say from a deontological perspective that the things that if they were conducted by everybody that the society would not continue or that there'll be an the impossibility and uh, i.e. the what it was referred to as a categorical imperative that's why Immanuel Kant said lying is wrong because if everyone did it we wouldn't be able to function as a society he said suicide is wrong because if everyone did it we wouldn't be able to function there'd be de death then by the same token or by the same logic then homosexuality would be wrong because if everyone did it the more popular route which is the utilitarian route we would say there's Actually, aspersion cast, first of all, how do you prove that the harm principle is true? As, is there a scientific way that you've come to prove that the harm principle is true? Secondly, if even if we implemented the harm principle on homosexuality, the question would be, could you make an argumentative case that it actually harms more people by way of disease or by way of contraction of this? Or as we know from the NHS that uh, homosexual sex is more likely to spread certain diseases and so on. So could you make a communitarian argument against homosexual practice? We would argue, yes, you can. And even if you argue on the, on the basis of families and so on, we were talking about the stability of certain families, actually all of the data, almost without exception, has shown that homosexual relationships, man, man, woman, woman, disadvantages the children more than a nuclear family. In the sense of the child is more likely to, to include themselves in delinquency, their educational level is more, uh, less thing, they're more likely to have psychological pathology, and so on. So even on a utilitarian basis, we would say that the traditional family setup is superior to the homosexual lifestyle mm. on those two grounds. If you're looking at it, even from the Western lens, we're not even saying from the Islamic lens, because all we have to say is that God said so. But we're not going down that route. I'm saying that if you look at it from a utilitarian lens, or from a deontological lens, both would point to the same reality.